Welcome back, everyone, to another week of That Range Life, a show, I don't know, sometimes about golf, sometimes not. Anyway, today we're going to talk about some golf, probably, and then, of course, plenty of other things, as we always do. Over there, Chris McEwen, at Chris McEwen on all the social medias. I don't know, do you ever hear of the Golf Origin Stories podcast? He does it, and it's really good. I'm Bill Bush, <laughs> DriveRangeHeroes.com, at Range Heroes, on all the social medias. Chris. Yeah, man. I really want to get right to TV talk, but yeah. uh, real quick, let's remind everybody, this is the second week of that range life being released as a podcast. It's very true. Now it's available, true. if I'm not mistaken, on all of the podcast platforms you generally pick them up from. If there's somewhere you can't get this podcast from that you prefer to, let us know because we just don't know. Yeah, right. hit us up on uh, uh, Twitter, Instagram, at Chris McHugh and at Range Heroes. Say, hey, put it on this, and we'll put it on that. We'll figure it out. Uh, yeah. But you know what? Maybe you're into the YouTube thing. And uh, for now, same show, both platforms. But hey, you can check it out on YouTube, too. We still appreciate you being there, subscribing, liking, and doing all of the things. Uh, who knows? Down the road, maybe we'll do a little bit on YouTube, a little bit on the podcast, and you'll have to consume them both. But for now, <laughs> same show, however you like to right. consume it. We appreciate the support, as always. All right, Chris. Yes. So many things to talk about. Um, I will tell you what. I am just now... Um, Let's see. We recorded our last show about a week a week ago on the dot, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Yep. In that week... <sighs> I have, I'll just put it this way, um, without going into too much detail, I had a week and, um, <laughs> okay. oh boy, I was just not in the mood for anything. So, uh, I'm, I'm hopefully I have a good spirit and my momentum stays positive through this show. But if I'm not my normal cheery self, I do apologize. <laughs> I do apologize. Fine. Fair. Uh, Okay. Thanks for the heads up <laughs> anyway, in the show. <laughs> anyway, let's go. Let's dive right in. Let's just start with TV talk. You you, you hit yeah. the tease, and I got to know, what's up? What do you want to okay, talk so, about? Yeah, so uh, we discussed this in a previous episode because you were ahead of me, and you hit the season three finale, and you focused on the meme heard around the world. Yeah. Uh, the Dawson the Dawson Leary meme, mm -hmm. um, and rightfully so. It, it's a, it's funny when I saw it, because um, you know it's coming, like you said. Like, I recognized his shirt. I'm like, yeah. oh, this is it. In the background, you're like, oh, this is, it's coming. Did it's you, supposed to be this heartfelt moment, Did but you, you can't have, help. Up until this point, by the way, like, even though you know in your, the shirt, the haircut, you know everything, but yeah. every time there's like – some heartfelt angsty moment down on one of the docks. You're like, wait, is this it? Is this it? I, I, I do. Like <laughs> there's season one through. There is one. Yeah, there is. There is. Well, I, I had known the episode because you told me it, but yeah, I had, I had kind of okay. anticipated yeah. it at some point, but I couldn't remember where it landed. Um, so during episode 23, like there was one other time where I'm like, oh, this is, He's do he's gonna do it. He's gonna, this is where he does it, and he didn't. It was kind of like ah. Uh, and then when it finally happened, it just made me smile. But he's like he's so sad and he's so heartbroken. But you can't help but be like ah. It's brutal. <laughs> it's brutal. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, anyways, uh, which I thought overall, just for the record, I know you kind of uh you had some issues with the season and you and with Andy at a certain point or whatever. Um. I thought it was a pretty good season overall. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. I did enjoy it. Um, anyways, the point I wanted to bring up around season uh, three, episode 23, the finale, um, something else happened in that episode that made me think um, and Google. Do you know something very significant happened? Right. So each each character arc is going back and they're like making the jump into like, you know, uh, Graham's has that speech of regret. Right. Of just of doing it and don't regret anything. So yeah. what does Jen do? She goes and tells what's his face that, you know, she loves him, whatever. Jack goes to see Ethan. OK. Yeah. Right? So I had to think because what is I'm halfway through yeah. season four. Jack now. I'm going like, to go tell yeah. Yeah, right. yeah right. <laughs> right. So Jack's going to go tell Ethan how he feels, and he's going to prove it. Mm -hmm. How is he going to prove that he's ready? I mean, he kisses I, Ethan. I say, I watch it. Is, am I supposed to answer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was asking you. But anyways, yeah, right. yes. So he kisses Ethan, right? Mm -hmm. That kiss 
was the first male homosexual kiss on television history in history of history was it really i didn't know it that. was it was because it, i mean so it's 2000 mm-hmm. and i think i think to myself i watch a lot of television yeah. i have watched a lot of television i feel like this is significant and sure enough i went to google started poking around in there um and in the same year, so it wasn't the first homosexual kiss. There was one lesbian kiss on L.A. Law the same year. I would have predicted like Ally McBeal, but yeah. Right. <laughs> but this was the Jack and Ethan kiss was the first male God, LA homosexual Law. kiss. L.A. Law was still a show. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I just thought that, you know, that deserves some recognition. And think yeah. about like, I mean, that's it, the year 2000. And uh there, I guess apparently uh, I went, of course, as we all do at times, there's rabbit holes that you find yourself in 45 minutes later, right? I was reading the history about the history of homosexual television. Oh, uh, a, you know that I, is a rabbit <laughs> hole, yeah. <laughs> and um, But they, there were other proposed scenes um, that the that different uh, you know networks, they had them rewrite or cut out altogether. They didn't do it. Um, and so, yeah, like even up until 2000, in fact, uh, there was a friend scene, um, I guess Ross, yeah, I, I'm not a big friends guy, but Ross, his ex-wife or something married a woman at some point. Like, yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. Okay. Um, friends didn't write them to kiss. They had the wedding on the show. Like it was like, yeah, you know, yeah. They, um, but they didn't write a kiss into the scene because they didn't want to offend anyone's sensibilities. Jeez. Yeah. So, anyways, God, that's I wild. Just thought, I didn't, yeah, that didn't even register with me as that could have been yeah. a thing. Wow, mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to point mm-hmm. that out to my wife after uh, <laughs> recording. Right. Like, hey, did you ever put this together? But um, heading into season season four, I'm I'm pretty excited. Uh, I thought the first episode was really good. You know, Joey and Pacey go off on their uh, three month mm-hmm. thing. Um, and uh, yeah, I, anyways, I'm I remember for season four, the events of like what took, I guess, just like the general happenstance of their their trip, we'll say, um, yeah, contextually a lot different than it ends up. And um, I'm kind of annoyed by that. But I think given, um, you know, how risque the show really wasn't while well, I thought it was being so in modern times, like, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I was just over remembering right. things. But either way. It's an interesting thing. Yeah, I thought it was a couple high school kids on a boat. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, you have to, we've talked about this. You kind of have to suspend some sort of, especially as parents, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because I'll be damned if my daughter's going on a boat for three months with Pacey of all people. Yeah. Right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, just like, okay, they want, they're, you know, so they're 17. And they went on a boat for three months. Fine. It's fine. Whatever. It's fine. It helps with the plot. They had to go away for the summer. I had to. Um, um, interesting. But Dawson's looking good. Oh, the other piece real quick. Dawson uh, is the, looking good. <laughs> Dawson's looking really good. He's grown up. He's yeah. got good hair. You mentioned you talked about his hair. Looks uh, like he's about 37. Me. Sure. Right. Right. But, you know, he's – I'm thinking about what you look like going from junior year to senior year. Like, I don't know. I looked like I was probably uh, – 13 going to 14, even though I was, you know, 16, 17 going to 18. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was like five foot tall and I think I might've just broken a hundred pounds. Maybe they were still calling you little Chris. Yeah. But at least I had hair on my face and stuff. Like I look like a, just look like a very tiny little man. Uh, anyways, um, Gretchen, we meet Gretchen Mm -hmm. episode one of season four. And I know you have some issues with her age or like, if that's an issue, I don't mind. Well, Okay, maybe you think she looks older than she looks. She's supposed she, to be. She does look like she's thirty-seven years old, and she's supposed to be three years older than them. And I'm like, she's like twenty twenty-one or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, and then later in season four, you'll see she's talking. They they all talk about the last. Uh, she's driving the three of them, and they're like, God, the last time we were in a car together. Oh God, can't remember. And they're like. And she's like, yeah, I was 14 or no, he, Dawson does his, you know, high, his little like high yeah, whisper yeah. voice he does. It's like, right. we were all 11. So you were 14. And I was like, she's not three years older. Like, <laughs> She's not. I. It's not. There are other, there are other um, older, supposed to be younger 
characters. Like it, it's, I don't think it's as bad as you make it out to be. Maybe it's because you're um, an elder statesman. Maybe it's because I look younger than I am. Like if you said I looked (laughs) right, exactly it, exactly it. Um, I will tell you, I won't uh, spoil it, but a scene, uh, a. a plot direction comes up about halfway through season four, uh, where <laughs> we're sitting watching it last night, and my wife goes, "Thank God, I'm ready for this to ha- have taken place." I'll just leave it at that. You can tell oh, me yeah? when you get there. She's like, "I needed this to happen," and okay. uh, you, you'll see. I'll leave it at that. But yeah, it's um, season four is feeling pretty good. I got a suggested YouTube clip. Uh, in my feed today, and it was probably from a year ago, eh, more than that, on the Late Late Show, uh, or Late Late Night, whatever it is, on CBS with James Corden, okay. and um, Katie Holmes was on with Ryan Reynolds and um, Judd Apatow, okay. and uh, James starts like poking and prodding, and he's he's a notorious fanboy of like 90s boy bands. And like all that era of TV shows and movies and that yeah. kind of stuff. And uh, so he's a Dawson's Creek person. And they're talking like first kisses in general. And she says her first kiss was when she was 18 years old and it was on the set of Dawson's Creek. Right. And it was right. with a guest star. And I'm like, was, who was her first kiss with? I'm like, was it that creepy guy? I'm like, I think it might have been Jack when Jack <laughs> wasn't a full character on the show right. and was right. still straight. Right. Right. Um, but then the conversation turns into um, who is a better kisser, the beak, as he calls him, or <laughs> Pacey. Yeah. And he doesn't call, you know, the beak or Pacey, not, you know, James yeah. Vanderbeek or Joshua Jackson. Right. Right. And Ryan Reynolds goes, I went to high school with, with, the jo- beak? with Josh. Oh, he did? And I can oh, confirm wow. he's a good kisser. So, but that, thinking about this, so like, think about that for a second. You go to high school and you have Joshua, high school Joshua Jackson and high school Ryan Reynolds in the same, like, I don't know about the same class, but same school. She's yeah. Like, that had to be, tell me, like, those guys probably weren't like the two coolest guys in your school, you know? And oh my God. Yeah. I'm sure we like to pretend they are. Ryan Reynolds probably was. Joshua Jackson was probably a huge dork being like, do you remember when I was Charlie Conway, everybody? And, I, and of course I would have been like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> you were awesome. Uh, all right. Anyways, that's all the TV talk I have. I just wanted to throw out that little fun fact. It's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you watch the uh, century tournament of champions at all? Oh, I did all four days. Yeah, so let's yeah. Uh, let's just start right off before we dive into the topics of it. I f- either I somehow was unaware um, the tournament the last day starts earlier because it was right. so nice uh, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. Get the kids down and just like go downstairs, fire up the TV, and it's like golf just started. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have plenty of golf to watch. I gotta say, just on that point. Yeah. Um, the PGA Tour and the Golf Channel, they don't do a lot, right? And someday I would like to do a show about what we would do if we were producing a Golf Channel tournament or something. Because I think it's easy for us to be like, ah, it's cr- crap. But like, you know, let's be proactive or something about it. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> um, they do a lot of stuff poorly. Yeah. I think that's that's fair to say. But kicking like the season off, or at least to me, this is the season kickoff in Hawaii at night for some primetime golf is like the perfect way to start the season. You get so spoiled. And if you know, you have I love what, it. two weeks straight in Hawaii yeah. with late start times. Then um, I think when they come back, they start in California. The California um, swing, they play Riv and Pebble Beach. Right, so you, they get out there, the but whatever. And so you yeah. get these late starts, and you're, you're like, yeah. God, this, especially like I'm, I am dead in the midst of like winter doldrums, right? And like, <laughs> oh, good, the days are getting longer. The sun only yeah. goes down at uh, two thirty in the afternoon <laughs> now, right? Um, so when it's pitch black at night, twelve degrees. If you're oh, lucky, God, so brutal, man. You have this golf to turn on, and you know it's just sort of nice to just like, I guess, just like veg out and float away in your totally. head and watch it. So, and yeah. it, I like it too because it's weird. Um, 
these guys are just shooting lights out. But if you watch it, the golf's also super sloppy. There's a lot of sloppy golf being played. At one point, one of the one of the guys on the on, I'm hesitant to call them announcers mm-hmm. on the program was like, yeah. oftentimes running into a fairway much wider than the length of a football field. Right. And I started to stop to think about. It. I go, wait a minute, think about that for a second. Flatten that out, and you go, hey. We're going to play a football game on this fairway, and there's more than enough space to do so. I'm like, right across the fairway, not the length of yeah, the fairway, right, right, right. Across, across the fairway. Like, like, right. Yeah. And don't, I mean, don't get me wrong, you and I will miss that in a heartbeat. Oh, but, and I have. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, God, they, they, and you, you watch them on TV, they are huge. Oh. And these guys are like, they can't see over a hill or something. So they're taking yeah. a provisional <laughs> and they're like, yeah, he doesn't know it because he can't see it, but that's in the fairway. <laughs> You know? Right, right. Um, yeah, but, wow. I think um, our you know Phil was there in like in body, but yeah. he was not. There was no, <laughs> he did not care about any of it. He was just there for the, the for the check and the trip to Hawaii. All time PGA Tour scoring record was broken by three players. Obviously, established a new one established by one of them. And right, uh, right. that was set at minus 34 by the winner, Cameron Smith. Oh, my God. Love Cameron Smith, by the way. We can talk so about him I. more. Um, funny story about Cam Smith, too, real quick. Um, he was on the television a lot, yeah. obviously, you know, Saturday and Sunday. And Saturday, uh, you know, Zell and I are watching, and she she sees him, and she's like, what's what's going on with his hair? <laughs> And then they they cut back to him, like they cut away, cut back to him, and then it's on his face with his mustache. And she's like, and his face. (laughs) And you were like, answer that. You were like, don't get Bill going. (laughs) (laughs) I just thought it was really funny. What's going on with his hair and his face? I love that he stuck with it. But minus 34, man. And I think Phil was plus 34, right? (laughs) 34 over. It's, I mean, so think about um, all of this stuff that's kind of flying around on Twitter, people just kind of trying to make sense of it, right? So Cam Smith shoots 34 under to win. John Rahm shot 33 under, Yeah. Uh, right? So he did technically break the previous record um, and lost. He also broke the record for most birdies in a 72-hole tournament and oh, I lost. Didn't, I didn't see that one. That's wild. Yeah, right? Crazy. And then think about like uh, Matt Jones – who shoots a 61 today mm-hmm. and loses by whatever it was, three strokes, two strokes. Like, so when oh I was, my God, when I was preparing notes for this show, yeah, I hate that we, we at this point, we're like I said last episode, uh, we've been doing a show for two years now. So, like, <laughs> cat's out of the bag. Yes, we do notes and we do try to, like, believe it or not, take the show, which <laughs> somewhat. Not seriously or prepared, but uh, obviously the commitment to it. We have to be somewhat organized. Uh, if there's one thing we learned from Lockdown Golf Podcast, it's <laughs> tough if you're not prepared. Hey, at speaking all. of Lockdown Golf Podcast, guess who is a new listener to this show? A previous oh. listener of that show, Scotty. Scotty is back. Scotty, I need my clock, bro. I need my clock. <laughs> Don't get don't get him started on the clocks. I just talked to him about the clocks. He's all he feels guilty enough I'm, I'm, as no, it is. don't feel guilty. I just <laughs> especially once we, we don't have to talk about, it, but you have new shelves behind you for those listening, yeah. not watching. And yeah. you uh you did have a oh wait, I see the perspective of the camera is different than the other. Oh man, I'm yeah. all tripped out now. <laughs> um but seeing your other you have a different clock now, which we won't get into. But yeah. I was like, God, I'm jealous now. So Such a good clock. Need that, yeah. need that clock. I have to give that clock to the actual person that was meant to be. Scotty, I need that only. clock. I need that clock, Scotty. All right. Um, anyways. Anyways. On. So as I was preparing notes, um, and because one of the points being I didn't watch any of the final round today because I'm like, oh, it starts at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was done by 6.30 or whatever. So yeah. I didn't watch any of it. So I was reading about it. And Billy Horschel, I think, was like 23 under. Um, <laughs> Justin Thomas was like 25 under. Go th- the rest of the season, imagine you just shot on a par 73 golf course. You shot 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 under par. 
Yeah. And weren't even close to winning. You yeah. weren't even close <laughs> you to lost winning. By seven or eight strokes. Like, oh, it's so funny. There was someone posted yesterday. Um, someone shot seven under, seven under, seven under Friday or Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, and they were like five shots back. It's ridiculous. I mean, they this, shot 54, 54 whole leaders, 54 whole <laughs> leaders <sighs> were Raman Smith, 26 under par after 54 holes. Right. right. That's an end. bizarre, bizarre. I'm like that. That should be like that would be a score in any other tournament where it's like not only did you win, you just smoked the you golf won by, course. Yeah, you won by twelve. That golf you course, by, right? That golf course is getting a visit by somebody immediately after the tournament's gone. Figuring out how can we make this place harder? It's no longer a viable professional golf course, <laughs> right? And you only and did that, that three golf days. Course, that golf course is seventy four hundred yards long. I don't know. I have you've been to Hawaii. I have not. It's true. Have you I've been to that island? But have you ever I have been? But it's generally the same. Have you ever golfed out there? No. Okay. No. Does I it haven't. have the whole like, oh, the ball goes farther here? The ball, like any of that? the ball it does go farther. Um and the you know, you have elevation too. You have right. lots of elevation. So like you saw some of these guys' drives. Uh I think Cam Smith's on I'm going to screw this up 15 or 16 or something. Mm -hmm. They watched it roll for like a full 60 seconds. They just kept the camera on it and it, it landed in the fairway and it just kept rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling. And they, you know, you hit like a 340 yard drive. No big deal. You know what I mean? With, with that, with, you know, his carry was 310. Right. Uh, and then it just hit that slope and goes. And, um, the, the hard part, like, uh, the hard part about that golf course is all the like uneven lies you're hitting from a downhill or I think it was the third whatever. the third day it's like ev between every single shot they cut to Nota Begay with with <laughs> with a level damn it I wanted to start the YouTube show with that with my level because that became such a like okay but guys <laughs> even better rather than just show the bubble in the thing <laughs> They would do like use the app on his cell phone and yeah, he had to the cell phone on top degree. of it. And right. I'm like, does anybody realize this is horrible television? This is that's part of awful. the and it's to me what's funny. Um, we're gonna get into the broadcast aspect of it here, but that's them trying, Bill. The level's fun. Trying. I thought the level bit was if they did it like once or twice, or once like another time, which is so absurd, it was funny. Right. Just do the level, but the cell right. phone on top of it, like, <laughs> hey, is that Nota, you got an iPhone uh, nine in your pocket. Or just, use, right, just or just use the just stand there, you know, or put the phone down and get the de get the degree because the level isn't really. I don't know visually. Like, I have no context still, even with the level. Like, I if you give me the <laughs> slope, like if you tell me it's a twelve degree slope, you know, off the green, like I can see the hill, and you give me the degree, I'd be like, oh, that's pretty severe. Or get a golf ball and just show us. How it rolls down the thing, like just think, what would the European tour do? That's what they should do, right? <laughs> right, but then don't just like I get, you know, the false fronts are, are are part of, you know, the other thing too is I think they they're trying to sell like this actually really is a hard golf course. Like, look, you know, like I don't care, and the pros are proving you wrong anyways. They're destroying the thing. But, I uh, firmly believe you give me a week down there, two weeks. Give me a week of like driving range. Well, oh, driving range time. Get a swing dialed in and get a feel for myself. And then the next week, I get to play a handful of rounds. I'll break eighty, no problem on that. Golf you're course. you're you're crazy. Just, just go with it for the show. You're, no, I will not. Just absolutely, you almost like I almost swore. So, <laughs> oh, I forgot you take these. I forgot you take these types of claims super serious. Oh, you're so full of shit. You are serious. Seventy seventy two. No problem. You think you think I people don't listeners viewers do not be fooled by him. Go no, I was just kidding. That he thinks that he thinks he, think he's that. one of those guys. Yep. He thinks he can break mm -hmm. eighty in a week. Give him three no, rounds two, or four I rounds. I said two weeks. I said two weeks. I need no, another week. But a, to one week of playing golf. One week of golf. Yeah. Nah. You, probably. You, probably only <laughs> need three. I probably don't even need the full week. Just three rounds. Just probably. Just 
It's probably. <sighs> oh, okay. You're the worst. I love it. I, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know it because you're going to be like, yo, you mean it. Chris, I don't no. think I don't think I could go to a par three course and break 110. Let's be that's honest. A, that's I just like I okay. <laughs> Chris, I'm I almost swore at myself. I'm terrible at golf these days. I know, I know. I'm I not know. breaking I couldn't break 80 at, See, at St. Andrews. <laughs> but if you no, well, you you could break 80 at St. Andrews. No. Not not no, the St. Andrews. <laughs> if you if you played it every day for a week, you could break 80 in St. Andrews. You get I, a week of driver and then you get a week at St. Andrews playing it every day, you could break 80. Drive. I firmly believe if I play it, fine, give me that week. Swings great after a week on the range and like practicing and getting dialed in. Firmly right. believe you give me a week playing, each round will get worse. Like, <laughs> okay. He started shooting about 80. He start opened out with like an 83. It was looking pretty good. And then uh, his last round was 136. I think your last round, your last round you'd press because you wouldn't have broken 80 yet. And you'd be like, I got to, this is it. I got to break 80. And then it would be a disaster. Yeah, that's actually probably true. Now, right. Right. future future content <laughs> idea. <laughs> um, anyways, I do really, sorry. I do really want to play that golf course though. In all seriousness, like that's oh, one I would, of those. Just, I would, yeah. TV never does a golf course justice. Yeah. That golf course looks amazing on TV. It does look great. Um, the greens are just massive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is it? I, I I guess I don't know if that's. Uh, if that's television fooling us, but I feel like guys were hitting spots on the greens and you didn't even see the flag anywhere. You're like, what? Yeah, where, like, oh, is that, where, a, <laughs> is that a double green? It shares with a, you know, six. Right. I'm like, no, it's just, just the, the, in there. the other, uh, other half of the golf hole. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's right. why these guys can drive so many of the greens. They're still just, you know, a hundred yards short, short of the pin. That's all. Right. Right. Um, right. <laughs> One last closing comment on Cameron Smith. Do you yeah. remember the video? I think it was from last season. Um, I God, I can't remember what tournament. I want to say it was somewhere in South Carolina where he just like guys were practicing and he just like showed up at one of the tee boxes or one of the greens with a, you know, a big marshland or swamp area with fishing stuff. He's like, oh, I'm going to go fishing here. And it's during no. practice. Rounds. So, yeah, I got to <laughs> find it. And he's just there to like, he's like, and he starts throwing lines and he's fishing, talking to the guys walking by. And finally, in like some sort of tournament, a fish or some sort, it's like, hey, you can't fish here. It's like, oh, there's practice rounds or whatever. I just want to get some fishing in. And like, they're like, one, there's alligators. This is dangerous. Right. Two, like, you can't, not here. You can't do it. <laughs> he's just like, oh, okay. And so he's like walking out with his fishing stuff. And the other pros are like, oh, they won't let you fish? I gotta, I gotta find it. It's a great video. Was it, a, it was a bit. Was it? It was a bit like a promotion or something. No, like he just was. He had. He was, it was like a. He, was he just wanted his, to go fishing. Yeah, yeah. Much like uh, the other famous Hawaii golf. It wasn't at Hawaii, but the when Speed and Smiley went on their <laughs> kayak and fishing adventure. Like we're done with golf right. for the day. Let's go kayak fishing. Uh, I can't wait till they do a flashback to that next <sighs> week. If they I can't wait. If they don't. That's it. Golf Channel is officially getting. <laughs> You're dead to me. Golf we're, we're done sending our letters to Sirius XM about how bad their PGA channel is. And we're sending them to Golf Channel going, you have one tournament a year with a can't miss piece of content and you missed it. Right. <laughs> you missed it. Oh, this is the best. I just love so best. I think it's Smiley grabbing, grabbing the lure with a foot joy <laughs> rain glove. And he's like, right. why are you grabbing the hook? I got a fishing glove on. He's like, no, you don't. It's a golf glove. Oh yeah. Uh, just watching them try to get into the boat <laughs> the and best. get off the shore is the best thing ever. Absolute best. Absolute best. Um man, we talked a lot of golf today. So that was golfy. And we were like, you know, we're basically a week after it, the end of the tournament because our podcast drops on Thursday. But whatever. didn't even think of that. So as hopefully everybody's uh, you know. One round. Everyone into, was waiting. Everyone was waiting for our take on that, so it doesn't matter. Rightfully so, as, yeah. you, as they should. Um, right. Speaking of golf content, here's something Golf Channel kind of got right. Did we they talk did. about this last week? Did we yeah. talk about this at all? The Tito's Shorties event. Mm -hmm. One gripe, and then we can talk about how great it is. Because mm -hmm. I thought it was great, and you did too. Um, so much fun. 
Hey, look, fun golf content that's a change of pace and something different. It's a nine hole thing. Lots of lots of things we can do with this with great personalities all over the place. I have an idea. Let's only make it a half an hour. Let's make it a half an hour. We can get Golf Central on for two and a half hours of uh, Rich Lerner and Brandel Shambly uh, going on and on about with some take no one cares about. Right. Or Michael Breed saying golf in with a weird <laughs> accent. And that's coming from a Chicago <laughs> kid. Like, don't worry. We can see him swing a pool noodle, pool noodle around. But God forbid we have Bellin and Manolo with Pat <sighs> Perez, Harry Higgs. Joel Damon and uh, uh, Harold Varner the third having yeah. a great time yucking it up. Harold uh, Varner number three. Harold, Harold Varner, Varner number three. Number three. And I sorry, I said Joel Damon. I meant Joel, <laughs> Joel, Joel. <laughs> insert pronunciation. Joel, 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 yeah, Joel, yeah. I right. just love. <laughs> Harry Higgs from was like from now on, you're Joel. <laughs> uh, God, it was so good, and they. Only half an hour. We can only do a half an hour. And I'm yeah. sure Tito's just hammered money into that thing. Well, just based on the charity donations. Right. Clearly, yeah. they were spending the money. Yeah. But we can only make it a half an hour on Golf Channel. Yeah. I I wonder. You Unless know, it was think, like a test. Um, Maybe it's a test. Hey, let's see how that, well this does. I also think because it felt. Um, so of those that didn't see it, um, it's called Tito's Shorties Classic. It was a par three course. Um, they were playing Wolf. It was two on two, right? Um, Manolo, the hilarious dude from Instagram. Uh, I didn't realize how much Manolo, and I, I shouldn't be surprised because this is the internet, and yeah, nobody like nobody just you, you know unanimously loves anybody. But I didn't realize how much heat and hate that guy takes. I thought like either people were sort of indifferent really? or loved them. I didn't know that either. Oh, that sucks. So much. Yeah. And I'm like, what, I, I honestly, at this point, if you have, if not fine, if you don't like him, but if you like actively dislike him, yeah. God, do you have a dump in your pants? Like, I don't know what yeah. to tell you at this point. Your I, life sucks, man. That's sorry. it. Your life sucks. Yeah. I'm sorry. I feel sorry for that. Like, I'm sorry that you have that in your life to hate something that is that, uh, you know, not a much, it's nothing. It's a dude that's ha- kind of having fun and people are enjoying it. I don't know. You know that's how many weird. people are probably like, sad. and he's not even that good. Like, oh, good. You got the bit. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. little secret there for those out there. Um, you don't have to be good at golf to do anything involved with golf. Yeah. Including play it. Right. Or teach it, or have a YouTube show about it, or do podcasts, I was trying to bring or this a website, or to, or to break eighty at Hawaii PGA golf courses. Right. right. Yeah. Anyways, um, so this was, it was a fun little thing, and like guys are drinking, you know, like Pat Perez keeps spilling his drink on the green, and like ice in the cup, and they're they're standing right at the cup, and it's it's basically when if we went out to play golf, that's what it. That's what it would look like, you know. That's what it does um, look like, <laughs> right? Uh, jo- Joel Damon is shanking shots. He's trying to hit these eighty-yard punch shots, and he's just shanking them. Yeah, um, you know, guys, it's just it was super fun. Uh, I, my thing was, and it was really well produced. It was real tight. Um, you know, they would do they would edit video so that, like you didn't watch each guy, like when you're watching a tour uh, stop, you didn't watch each each guy tour or tee off at the same time. They just said boom, 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 like they would line them up, kind of in a four stack and you'd watch all of them hit their approach shots and then you'd get to the green. Right. Um, mm-hmm. so it was like really well edited. I thought maybe cause it felt very sort of for the YouTube generation. And I think that's maybe that's why it was only like 30 minutes or whatever it was, 22 minutes probably with commercials. Like it was an episode. Yeah. Um, I was just like, I just want more of it. Like do a series yes. of that stuff. I don't know, whatever it is. Um, make more of that stuff. Cause it was just, it was a blast watch. The other, the other, you talked about kind of the one negative. Here's my negative. Um, I don't think Golf Channel promoted it at all. No, of, really. course, of course they didn't. Because you didn't it's not see just it. Old, boring yeah. white guys. Which is such a bummer, man. Like they didn't. I went to try to go find um, like a clip or something, and I was like, "Well, Golf Channel, I'm sure they're you know pumping it." And not a thing. I was like, "God!" And you, you could have preloaded all that stuff. It was a recording. It wasn't yeah. live. Like get someone on that scratch or PGA or channel. I don't know, whatever, but 
all yeah. those production guys from moving it to Connecticut to really streamline it, you know, streamline yeah. the channel, nailing it. Right. God, I love, right. I love <laughs> Golf Channel. Right. So good. Anyways, uh, yeah, it was super fun. I liked it a lot. Yeah, I, I do hope they do more of that. There's so, like, I don't know, just something along those lines. I don't know how. I don't know how, based on the social media and that, what, like, how how does Manolo not have a full time media job at this point? Like somebody, whether it's Scratch or yeah. Eric Anders Lang teaming up, like somebody needs to just put the money behind that and be like, go go make some content and right. have a show, do something. Like the guy, yeah. he and I've seen you can see it even every now and then. Like he breaks his character on his own Instagram. Uh, in his stories or whatever, where he's yeah. going to some event, he's not doing the whole Manolo shtick. Um, yeah. He he's a good chameleon. Like he can he can adjust to an environment and fast. He's very very quick on his feet. So yeah, I, yeah, that's what I mean. Like that that um, I was a little worried <clears throat> about that. Like he's in you know like you think like oh he's just an Instagram dude or whatever. Um, but yeah, he's he's really smart. And you put a mic, you know, give him a mic and just tell him to go that way. Yeah. You know, and he's gonna make a show out of it. I think it's yeah, he's really good. He's really good. Should get Manolo on origin stories, get to work on that. Believe me. Believe <laughs> me. I've been working on <laughs> it. Do it. Yeah. Um any other Tito Shorty's comments? I don't want to talk about it too much because you can go watch it on YouTube. Yeah, and no, you should. It's fun. It's really fun. Uh no, that's it. I think, uh, you know. I kind of like, too, like how it. much bad golf they got. Well, one. Well, that was, yeah, that was the other fun piece the, to the two. Like, yeah. They aren't playing on their a usual level of conditioned golf course. And you could tell, like, oh, I'm sorry. Did you, do you guys have to get used to these little peon muni greens like we have to play? <laughs> right. These slow, hairy, small greens right. when you're hitting off a mat it into was aw- these greens. It was awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I, I it, like, and that's I think same thing with the tournament of champions, right? The um, mm-hmm. there's a certain appeal of like knocking the rust off and like seeing these guys hitting ground balls, hitting uh, just shank, shanking the ball, flaring them, God knows where, because like they haven't yeah. been playing whatever, and they know it, and they talk yeah. about it. This is a this is a trip to Hawaii. To, they get to knock their rust off in Hawaii, and they usually make like family <laughs> vacations out of it. Blah blah blah. Right. right? Um, it's kind of fun to see a little bit of that human element come into the golf game. We go, Oh, you guys are normal people too. Sometimes. Yeah. hundred percent. There are some on the tour that are. Except they, normal. they go, just give me a week swing in the club and like two rounds and I'll break right. 68. Right. <laughs> you know, and you're right. like, Oh, they're okay. So maybe you're not human. Right. That's like Justin Thomas took the, you know, rust off and shot a 61 on Saturday. Yeah. Like, All right. I'm, I haven't, I'm I haven't, better now. <laughs> I haven't really played since uh, the Ryder cup. Oh, right. hey, uh, drinking game for that coverage. Uh, take a shot every time they mention Bones was on Justin's bag and used to be oh, Jesus. part of the programming. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. I forgot about that, that he next used to year, be on TV. Next year, we need to do that. We need to make a drinking game or, or like a bingo game where it's like shot of a whale, shot, shot of a surfer, um, <laughs> uh, Bones mention or whatever it is. Uh, and then if the uh, when the level shows up. Everybody drinks, <laughs> right? Right. Your free, sp- your free space on the bingo cards. The level comes out. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, uh, man, I think that, I feel like that's a, we covered the golf topics this week. That was yeah, golfy, golferific. Um, how, how's dry January treating you? Um, okay, but uh, as you know, tonight I had coffee. Yeah. Um, cause I got so tired of drinking water and I was tired, but, uh, and I want to be ready for the show and give you my full effort for the show, Bill. What did I do? I can hear <laughs> your voice. I didn't do it. I'm trying. Um, <clears throat> but I will say that, um, yeah, I'm starting to miss it. And I did like, I think yesterday, like last night, it's Saturday night. Um, I was doing some video editing and I'm just kind of like, you know, uh, It'd be great to have just a little, little taste of bourbon. Uh, I put it all away. I don't want to look at it because I I have the yeah. good stuff that you gave me, mm-hmm. and um, there'd been no way if that thing was on the counter. I've been like, mm, yeah, no one's that. gonna know. I know that. Feeling. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so I did. I and I 
I think I did look at the calendar and being like, oh God, it's it's not we're not even in like halfway through the month. I think today was my first hint of withdrawals. Do you really? Well, because like you said, right? Uh yeah. We we're healthier, we're cleaner, you know, you, you should sleep better, whatever. I'm sleeping yeah. terrible. And uh the exhaustion I had today, it's to the point where it's like I wake up going. Oh God! Sunday morning, I'm kind of hungover. I don't even drink. I'm not hungover. Really? You just didn't sleep well, yeah. And I think yeah. it's like my body wants to expect to be hungover, if that makes right. sense. And it, it, it's <laughs> right. not. Um, I do physically feel a lot better during this month. I've like I forgot sure. about this, and that feels great. Yeah. But um, yeah. Ooh, the stress I was going through this week. Um, God, I just like just even bringing up the topic. Still, I'm like. Oh man, say it like I wasn't like. Let's not go off the deep. I'm like, oh, I was in a dark place. Like, not anything anyone needs to be concerned about here. Yeah, not but you're just means. stressed out, man. Well, it's, yeah. and like, not worth notice. I didn't respond to our group text at all. Um, it's and true. Then, like at night, you might text me something, and it's like, okay, I'd be back on my feet a little bit and be able to converse um yeah. but it's yeah. so like the stress like i could just really go for a drink right now yeah and right. they didn't and then but yesterday saturday again saturday like you said getting the grill out I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oh I'm yeah gonna that was me. that was your thing last year too yeah you going to smoke got, some yeah. chicken get some yeah I, man my chickens i smoked i did two beer can chickens one with yeah. a marinade one just like kind of standard barbecue style Whew. classics came out how so long good. does it take to smoke a chicken um, doing two of them yesterday took me roughly, uh, yeah, roughly an hour and a half or so. It could okay. be like two. It all depends. You know, do you want to get a smoky flavor and go low and slow or what do you want to do? Right. So you could yeah. probably get it done in an hour. Um, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be as flavorful. Yeah. Per se. Per yeah. se. Per se. Per se. Uh, but Got they it. were, they were delightful, but same thing. I was like, God, be really, and cause it was cold as shit this weekend. Uh, so cold. I was and now like, it's just like the city is covered in a sheet of ice. Oh, we can talk about that topic in a second. <laughs> um, but I was like, man, just to have a, even just a little nip of something, but nope. And then I yeah. rediscovered, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you see me drinking at this, uh, untitled art CBD sparkling uh, water. You've seen them in oh, my refrigerator before. Good. Yep. Um, the CBD is uh, CBD does not have any effect on me, and it's such a low amount of CBD in one can of this. Like, it's not going to do a ton to you. It's what thirty milligrams in that can? Twenty. Okay. And yeah, um, low. what I noticed when I found like I found one yesterday, I'm like, I just can't drink water anymore. I'm going to drink one of these things. Yeah. Can't quite figure it out, and it's no by no means like a hundred percent whatever replacement for me but i definitely had there was some like little bit of rush taking place um i didn't feel calmer i didn't feel yeah. more energy i didn't feel clearer there's just something maybe six percent something interesting don't know what but i and maybe it's the carbonation the like mouth feel of it i go i don't know but i need more <laughs> so i went and bought two uh two 12 packs lime and strawberry Oh, nice. And I, I, sh I should have done that before because I don't want to go into Benny's right now just for CBD. And it's tough. Thankfully, beer seller. Oh, look, if you're watching YouTube, I'm wearing a hoodie. Yeah. And that's ironic. I didn't mean to. Um, Coincidental. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Isn't that ironic? Don't you think? That's what I meant. <laughs> um, shout out Ryan Lent recently posting ironic on his channel. I know. Um, Excited about that. I haven't looked at it yet. I do want to learn it, though. But um, yeah. Yeah, I've been really, uh, I've been enjoying it. It's kind of, it's better than Le Croix, the other. Yeah, for sure. Rat poison, bubbly water. Yeah. Did you see, I just saw this and I didn't send it to you because I was super crabby. Um, I got a suggested ad for it though. The, the Topo Chico hard seltzer coming out. I've had that before. It's, it's, it's delicious. Oh, you have? Okay. So oh, it yeah. is, it's out. I say it coming out. It's I didn't out. mean it was coming out. Like it exists. I didn't know it was a thing. Yeah. It is in the world for sure. It's still, uh, it's and good. it's very good. It's very good. Nice. Yeah. I had it. Um, it's been, it's been around for a while cause I had it in Michigan and in Arizona last year. Hmm. It's like, it's my go-to. Like if they have that, that's what I'm going to get. It's so good. You have to keep an eye peeled for that. 
And it's, but they're, they are like, um, you know, they're light, right? They're 5% or something, but you can drink like a dozen of them in a round of golf because, you know, they're little tiny cans and they're light and they're flavorful. And you don't even think that you're ingesting all this booze, but you are. <laughs> but you had 12, 5% <laughs> drinks. Right. And you're like, this is great. Right. Right. Um, I will say in the world of craft beer and you, you and I being such high class, beer connoisseurs it's true um, snobs if you will snobs. some people some people call us call us snobs bell's hop slam came out once a year right comes out it has mm-hmm. been released the beer seller had posted they had their uh allotment in or whatever yeah i went and picked up a four pack because i usually get it's not as good as it used to be but i usually get it every year because i want to try it whatever yeah i'm gonna have this last year same problem getting right in the beginning of dry January. Going, <laughs> All right. Well, I know. See you in a few weeks. I have so many good beers that I can't drink right now. It's really. Think about uh, when, you, bummer. when you come over to the garage studio and you were seeing quite literally probably like a thousand dollars worth of yeah, high end sure. beers. And you're, I'm just looking at those going. Yeah. All right. He's waiting for us. Well, those aren't getting touched <laughs> for a month. Right. <laughs> That's why it was uh, Christmas Eve. I'm looking at him. My da- I'm, I'm grilling, and I looked at him, and I go to my dad. I'm like, "Well, they're just gonna be sitting here. Might as well open one of the good ones, huh?" <laughs> yeah, like, that's okay. A, yeah. That's what I did. I did that on yeah Christmas Eve and then New Year's Eve. I I think I had like yeah two of the good ones. I feel like off the uh, I think off the mics. I feel like we recap that our, our New Year's <laughs> Eve <laughs> we did. consumption. It's true. It's true. Um, <clears throat> anyways. Anyways, how do we get there? It's quite the I don't journey. Know. Don't know. <laughs> don't know. I'm glad we're doing it though. I want to stay doing it. I don't want to. And we we might have to talk too with some things coming up. I'm at a point where I feel like uh, we you know. I think we discussed last show. Maybe the three day, two day exception here, but yeah. it, with paying it back with interest. Yeah. But the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm like, I don't know if I want to do that, and not out of I'm more than willing to do the time with interest. That's not the issue. Oh, you don't want to break the streak. I kind of feel like that. Like, I kind of feel like it's a little bit of a. Yeah. I'm with you. Um, but boy, that's a, that's a big ask. Well, and especially considering one of the, I'll just say this to you being real cryptic because we still haven't said what we're doing. Sure. And, uh, you know, a very specific variable about what we're doing. Right. We're not drinking for it. It's going to be tough. Right. Right. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, you know, uh, I'm going to pay it back. I'm not going to commit to try to keep it going. If, if I'm not, I don't think we're, com- we can't commit to anything. Yeah. We have, yeah. we, we're, <laughs> I could see it being about a mm, four and a half hour conversation topic <laughs> right. with right. Uh, phones in airplane mode, nothing else to do. <laughs> I see it coming up. Right. Um, yeah, man, I had something I wanted to talk about, but it's such a back to golf topic that I don't, I don't, I don't feel like we can get back to it cleanly. Um, there. All right. Golf origin story has been busy. Chris, what do you, what do you have going on in origin stories world? It has been busy, but I've only been uh, releasing episodes once every two weeks. So we're still on the Sam Harrop episode. Okay. Um, the, so you can go listen to that. He's, for those of you that don't know who Sam is, he writes, uh, he's a songwriter, he's a piano player. Um, he works for a music publisher. He has dedicated his life to writing songs about golf. They're parody golf songs and they're really fun. And he's a good dude talking about the good of Instagram, right? Or good of social media. He's one of the goods of social media. He's going to be, I mean, he's written, it's crazy. Like he, he did one song and then, uh, you know, it caught on. You wrote it about t- Tony Finau. Tony Finau retweeted it, and then from there it was like, you know, was that the the one? I think the, that's the one, one that kicked it off. Yeah. Okay. You have to listen to the episode. Listen to the episode. He'll give you the whole origin story of. Yeah, but I'm trying songs. to go back to remember which one was like the <clears throat> first one where I was like, "Who's this guy? He's actually yeah. pretty good." Because yeah. I feel like the first place I saw him sort of catch and go, well, this guy's in England and follows him was uh, Ryan Q Info, case of the golf one. Oh, Monday yeah. Q Info. Yeah. Um, I felt like that was my initial exposure, but anyways, that's yeah. going to be, that's going to be my own mental struggle. That I'll uh, never the other thing the that's, to. the other thing that's going on is uh, you are a, you are on a what's in the box 
uh, bender. It is the, tis the season. Yeah. So keep an eye out. Talk about subscribe and hit the bell. Or if you're listening, head over to YouTube because Bill's got boxes and boxes and boxes of things he's opening these days. So one of them, uh, as we discussed, the most complicated piece of equipment I have maybe in my near decade of doing this whole golf internet thing I've ever had to deal with. <laughs> I, sent, I sent you a text like, yeah, just exactly about that. Like, whoa. Yeah, there's a lot going on, a lot, <laughs> and I like it could be awesome. I'm I'm very yeah. hopeful for it, um, yeah. but check that out. I, I will say that might be a uh, a nice little pivot. I texted you this last night. A nice pivot of primarily YouTube review content because there's just there's just. I think there's gonna be just too much to write about in any sane fashion. It's gonna take you. I mean, that's that's five thousand words oh, describing yeah. everything that that thing can do. Yeah, plus the review of it. The the post is probably just gonna have to be these brake pads are really cool. <laughs> Here's a YouTube video. Go watch it. And it's largely right. gonna be me going. Uh, my phone runs out of battery every six seconds. So here's Chris testing here's, it. Here's Chris. All right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, do that. Subscribe Anyways, yeah. and get those videos. All right. So that's um, what's going on uh, in my little world. Cool. Our little world. I like it. I like what about it. The, what about the website world? So I had a surprise post come up Thursday last week as we're trying to figure out the balance of how to post that range life on the website, what days, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I recently came into, if you're watching here on the YouTube show, you'd see it, but a Scott Redmond Concepts made Byron Morgan putter cover. Uh, yeah. And I forgot an interesting piece of the story till after I posted the story about how I got this. Maybe we'll, I wanted to talk about this a little bit this week. Maybe we'll save it for next week's show. Yeah. Um, but there's another guy out of the UK who is, I, I'm going to save it. I don't want to get too into his story because he will come up in content down the road. But um, okay. he got paired up because he does graphic design work. And he's super into golf with Scott Redman and started doing some different designs and whatnot for him. And then Scott Redman's like, hey, I got this guy, Byron, and him and Byron have been friends. And uh, they made some putter covers. And I got one weird awesome. cosmic thing, you know, here with yeah. uh, Byron's passing and then my good friend Scott Redman making it. So I picked one up. I got a post about it. Check that out. Um, okay. Another Tour Edge hot launch review. We got the C522 Fairway that went up. As you're listening or watching, yeah. so check that out. And then Lyle and Scott, a uh, oh yeah, Scottish UK based apparel company. Um, I've had the stuff for a bit. Had some issues uh, getting photos and whatnot for. It. That's a whole nother story. Don't get me started. <laughs> um, but they've been around, uh, God, quite literally forever uh, in the in the game of golf. We're talking like back in the mid 1800s right mid 18 late 1800s um royal family stuff they've worked with all the big fashion houses i'm talking like dior uh louis vuitton you name it and i'm like in the 50s the like real right. real big deal company really well known in the past for their cashmere and wools and what stuff so really nice stuff check that out and um yeah i think that's about it for the week yeah. All right. Well. All right, man. Thanks for listening, everybody. I, I was going to say, do the thing. Do the call to action. Yeah. Like you I'm do work, so well. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. This, If you're watching <laughs> this on YouTube, hey, do us a favor. If you're not, actually, if you're listening, head over to YouTube. Subscribe to Chris McEwen on YouTube. We'd really sure. appreciate it. Hit the, the link is probably in the description or notes or something. We hope it is. Just like click on the link. That is the plan. So if it is there, click the link and head over there. Subscribe. Do all the things. If you're watching YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell so you get notified when all this what's in the boxes come out, some reviews. We got Chris and I got some stuff coming next week. We have no idea what we're actually going to do, but we, we're going to bring oh, microphones. We're going to bring cameras. It's going to be such a thing, man. And try to keep do an something. eye out. Follow us on, uh, on the social media. You'll see it there first before you see uh, where we are and what we're doing on YouTube. And we will really. absolutely overpromise and under deliver on that social media. I mean, that's kind of our thing. That's right. our deal. We that's wouldn't we want do. it any other way. So make sure you do that. And uh, guys, thanks for everything. Thanks for stay, sticking with us on the second week of the podcast. 
Word. Not a big deal. All right. That's Chris McEwen at Chris McEwen. All those social medias. I'm Bill Boyce, Joe RangeHeroes.com at Range Heroes. This has been That Range Life, episode 101 or two. You pick. Thanks for listening or watching. We'll see you next week.